There is a magnificent mural depicting the multiplication of the loaves and fishes on the wall of the chapel of St. Thomas More College in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, in Western Canada. That college was founded by the Congregation of Priests of St. Basil, Basilian Fathers, who brought to the Canadian prairies the long Catholic tradition of a liberal arts education that integrates faith and learning. The mural was painted in 1976 in only 10 days by the late William Karelik, a self-taught Ukrainian painter of the Canadian prairies. The mural leaves a powerful religious impression on the viewer. What is striking about the mural is the figure of Jesus placed in the middle of the mural, symbolically holding together the large prairie crowd. And one notices that those distributing the baskets of bread are the Brazilian fathers themselves, dressed in their black cassocks, walking among the crowds and feeding them. Who are these men? Where did they come from? What were their roots? Why do they do the things they do? What animates them? What can their historical foundations teach us today? In order to understand the Brazilian fathers, we need to go back to the early 19th century France, to a time of revolution that resulted in the dissolution of religious orders. The government forced bishops and clergy to take a civil oath, dissolving their obedience to Rome. It was in this turmoil that a project began that would become the Congregation of Priests of St. Basil, the Brazilian Fathers. The history of our uh, community begins in um, a terrifying period in French history as the French Revolution evolved, you see. And uh, there were still real dangers of being guillotined, if you like, because uh, either you were for the Republic or you were <laughs> a priest, and hence uh, part of the um, the opposition, if you like. They, they wanted to get rid of the priest, then everything would be fine. And of course, it didn't work out that way. But um, those are the things that come back to me now. And uh, the history, uh, as I say, is a strange one in the sense that the 10 people whom we could consider to be our founders really didn't intend to found a religious community at all. They, they figured they could do the work they wanted to do better if they lived together, uh, a common life. And little by little, it came about that uh, the best thing to do was to form a, a religious community, but that wasn't their first uh, intention. So it's a bit bizarre from that point of view. I always think of Brazilians as kind of an accidental religious order. There was a work that needed to be done in that school in saint Sophorien de Maun, and the work moved and the priests who were doing it moved with it and they kind of accidentally found themselves structuring themselves into what we would call a Roman Catholic religious community. It's providential but it looks from the outside a little bit accidental. During the turmoil and persecution of the Catholic Church during the French Revolution and the Reign of Terror, a clandestine school was established in saint symphorien de marin in the department of Ardèche in the south-central part of France. Among the founders of this new community were ten men, Vincent Duré, Joseph Lapierre, Augustin Payan, Pierre Torbier, Julien Tracol, André Fayol, Henri Martinesque, Jean-Antoine Vallon, Jean Pagès, and Jean-Baptiste Poli who was a mayor of saint symphorien de mar he hid priests to protect them, attended the clandestine seminary college, and was secretly ordained. We have a, a, a community of unique individuals who, who, who gave birth to our congregation. And in the same way that you can see successors of, the, of St. Francis in the, in the Franciscan communities, and successors of St. Ignatius in, in the Jesuit community, you can see successors of a unique 
gifted group of men who came together in community. So we were founded, in a sense, not so much by an individual founder, but we were founded by a community. And I think we were founded by a group of, of, of I expect, quite different men, each who, who, who viewed our future in different ways, each who had uh, different plans for uh, the congregation and, and what lay ahead, but each of whom was dedicated first to the community and secondly to the priestly ministry of education. In 1802, following the Concordat with Napoleon, the school was moved to Annonay. By 1813, they had expanded to three schools in Annonay, Saint Barbe and Saint Clair. In 1822, six of the priests wrote to Bishop La Brunière of Mande, asking him to approve a new association of priests, Les Prêtres de Saint Basile. They were joined by four more, and on November 21st, 1822, the Feast of the Presentation of Mary, they elected Father Joseph Lapierre as their first superior general. We were responding to a need of the church that we saw very, very clearly. We saw uh, people who were going through a very difficult time uh, in uh, early 19th century France. We saw people with very specific needs. We identified those needs to be for Christian education and we responded, giving the gifts that we believe that we have uh, to the people who are most in need. We saw those gifts in the area of education. In short, we responded to a need of the church. And, and that, that response characterized our first ministry and it characterizes our ministry today, no less. When they were searching for uh, a holy patron, they thought of St. Francis because uh, the school, when it moved from the country of saint saint fourier de Nain into the city of Annonay, moved into a Franciscan college, which had been abandoned by the Franciscans. And so they thought perhaps St. Francis would be a good patron. But also, the um, school of formation, or the minor seminary, if you like, that they were asked to take over uh, in the southern Ardèche, was in the, the uh, parish of Saint Basile. And when they got thinking about it, well, Saint Basil is not a bad choice because uh, he was a scholar and uh, he encouraged uh, education of youth. He encouraged the use of everything that would be helpful, not just sacred literature, but profane literature as well. And uh, they finally chose him as St. Basil as our patron. Bishop Armand de Charbonnel, named the Bishop of Toronto in Canada in 1850, was a Basilian student in Annonay from 1811 to 1819. He needed an English-speaking priest to be with him and never forgot his former teachers in Annonay. He invited a young Irish Basilian, Patrick Maloney, to come to Toronto and join him. Two years later, Maloney was joined by four other Basilians, Fathers Soulerin, Malbo, and two scholastics, Messieurs Vincent and Flannery, both of whom would later be ordained priests in Canada. This small group of Basilians laid the foundation for St. Michael's College in 1852 and St. Basil's Parish in 1856. During the Third French Republic, Catholic schools were a target, this time of the socialists, who were determined to secularize education. The French government finally suppressed all religious orders in 1903. The Brazilian conferers were dispersed and their property was sold at an auction. The religious life of the Brazilians in France was suspended for 20 years. In 1922, circumstances became so difficult and the reality of religious life so different between North America and France that it was judged necessary to split the Basilian Fathers into two separate religious congregations. Basilian Fathers in North America took vows, making them a full religious congregation. With the Basilian Fathers of Toronto, this was a time of rapid growth. In France, the situation was dire. By 1950, they were reduced to 13 priests and six scholastics. Under Father Room, they petitioned to be reunited with the Basilian Fathers of Toronto, and that reunion took place in 1955, when Father George Flaff was our Superior General in North America. 
je me souviens qu'avec euh, à la fois admiration et nostalgie, je me souviens que nous avons commencé notre nouveau ministère au collège par une vie de prière commune qui n'a pas tenu le coup. Oui. On se réunissait tous les matins pour l'oraison. Oui. Après le repas de midi, on allait à la chapelle faire une visite. On rappelle très bien, oui. Il faut que je vous dise merci aussi. Mais vous l'avez senti vous-même, le, le merci que, il faut que nous disions encore maintenant, malgré notre petit nombre, ce merci, il faut que nous le disions à tous ceux qui l'ont mérité. Si ce n'était pas pour leur communauté, Uh, there wouldn't be a Toronto, there wouldn't be a Bogota, there wouldn't be a Mexico, there wouldn't be a Houston. One of the most privileged experiences I, I've had in, in the last four years was in the chapel of uh, Maison Saint-Joseph in Annonay when I received the, the vows of uh, Warren Schmidt, who, uh, whose ordination I just attended uh, two weeks ago. I, I received his vows in, in that chapel, surrounded by uh, the small community of men who still Uh, continue there, and, and it really was one of the most moving experiences I've had in the last four years. When we speak of our French roots, we must also remember Paris and those North American confreres who were sent to the French capital to pursue their theological studies and help build bridges with our French confreres. Being called from the community to go to France on this project was extraordinary. I never thought that a young boy born in Windsor, Ontario would ever be doing and working in such a project. And when we got there, we were so disappointed uh, because we arrived very tired because it was uh, four prop planes. We arrived in Paris, Father Platt met us, and our house wasn't ready yet in EC. So we stayed with the Missions Étrangères the foreign mission people. And uh, it was rather uh, simple. Straw mattresses, straw pillows, uh, single light bulb, cold water tap. And we thought, oh my gosh, this is Paris. EC was perfect. It was the end of the subway line, Marie DC, seven minute walk to St. Sulpice Seminary, Uh, about a 20-minute subway ride, metro ride, down to the Catholic Institute if we had classes there. But it was, a, it was a neighborhood, and it was a neighborhood which was special. This was new for me and for us. Uh, the suburbs, you know, the ring around Paris at that time, were communist. Well, I guess perhaps I did speak French. It was one of the reasons why I was asked to go to France to study second and third year theologies. It was such a joy to be able to do theology in Paris, because things were very vibrant at that particular time in, in Paris and theology. And, uh, when I look back, my theology days were uh, probably the happiest in Paris, um, because The professors were so good. Alors, au départ, en fait, je ne devais pas venir ici au Collège Sacré-Cœur à Nenay. Euh, le, le curé de ma paroisse devait m'envoyer euh, au petit séminaire à Valence. Et en fait, je n'avais pas envie d'aller au petit séminaire à Valence. Et c'est pour cela qu'on a choisi, le, avec mes parents, euh, ici à Nenay. C'était le collège le plus proche. Alors, j'ai découvert, en fait, que les, les pères basiliens étaient très présents à leurs élèves. J'étais interne ici, moi. Je restais... 15 jours sans retourner dans la famille et j'ai été très marqué par l'attention qu'ils avaient aux élèves, euh, le souci de, de connaître les élèves et puis aussi par euh, la vie spirituelle qui se dégageait de cette maison. When I think of Father Jean Stone, a marvelous teacher he was, and uh, he was a character, you know, Father Bro. Father Bro was from the Southern Ardèche. Many of them were, in fact, from the southern Ardèche. Alonais is in the north of the Ardèche. 
department, so that's an anomaly. But uh, I used to be uh, amused at Father Bro because he had the accent, the French accent of the southern France. So he'd pronounce every syllable. But the characters, yeah, I'd say every one of them was a character. And Father, Father Renoir, he was a marvelous teacher and uh, uh, sort of a bon vivant at the same time, you know. So uh, they were all great. They really were. Oui, effectivement, je suis resté pendant 43 ans au collège. Euh, ce qui m'a marqué en premier, c'est le, la confiance que m'a accordé le père Robert quand il m'engageait. J'étais un jeune professeur inexpérimenté et il m'a permis de faire petit à petit mon expérience. Et j'ai pu, au contact des élèves aussi, avoir de l'expérience de plus en plus. Et je remercie beaucoup les Basiliens de m'avoir accordé cette confiance. C'est la, la, la gentillesse, vraiment la gentillesse incarnée par le père des Glens, c'était la gentillesse même, l'accueil, et puis justement, se, se toujours faire confiance aux gens, dire qu'on était capable, et c'est sensationnel, quoi. I remember Father Pouzal taking us out to gather uh, mushrooms, and uh, of course, we're terrified because there's these poisonous mushrooms, and so he knew the land very, very well, and he would do this. The other thing was he had this incredible energy. I came back exhausted and went to bed. He just kept going. So that's my strongest recollection of one of the older confrères. Moi, j'ai été très marqué, par exemple, par le père L'Extrait, qui était quelqu'un qui, qui, de temps en temps, prenait quelques colères, mais qui, en fait, était très, très présent aux, aux jeunes. J'ai été très marqué par le père Renoir, qui, qui joue au foot avec nous euh, sur la cour. Michel de Glenn et Jacques de Glenn, just two wonderful people. Uh, but the French, are, as you know, are sometimes, uh, I don't want to say hard-headed, <laughs> and, uh, but uh, you get along with them and, and you learn to, to live with them and uh, they, they explode, I found, much more easily than uh, North Americans, but they forget that they exploded five minutes ago and then uh, you're, you're their best friends again. And yet the question lingers. What is the legacy of the Bazilian Fathers in France? We're now at the sunset. There are very few left. We still have the school and the tomb of the founders and the cemetery. But what will people remember? When I think of uh, Annonay, uh, in a sense, concluding its mission uh, for the congregation, I think of, of, of two things. First of all, I think of priestly ministry infused with the passion for Christian education, which is what gave birth uh, to our schools there. Uh, I, I also think of something else, uh, an absolute unconditional trust in God's providence. It can lead to something that is magnificent for the church. It has led to the Bazillion Fathers. We're the legacy here. They came over, they were what, 17, 19 people? and they sent four over, and we're part of that legacy, and we've passed it on to Colombia, we've passed it on to Mexico, we've passed it on to St. Lucia. That's going to be part of their legacy. And in the south of France, they're known, not so much uh, for their pastoral work, but the school. There are many, many uh, of the priests and the wonderful lay leaders in the south of France who went to the school, and that's gonna be part of their legacy and our little contribution to the history and the history of France they brought over here. Alors euh, quel sera le testament des basiliens en France Je sais pas trop. Euh, bon l'idée enfin, qu'on a c'est d'essayer de de faire continuer l'esprit euh, des basiliens dans ce collège dont on a toujours la tutelle canonique et pour cela bon je suis en train de mettre en place une équipe de tutelle avec des, des professeurs, des anciens élèves, en espérant que, au moins dans les 20 ans qui viennent, ils puissent euh, assurer une certaine continuité. When I think of Anne I think about a great privilege it was for me to have spent a lot of time at the place of our origins and to be able to see, oh, we were about a hundred and some years by then, 
uh, the tradition that I had known only from books or from our rule or from our history, I absolutely, I saw it alive. The school was simple, it wasn't a modern North American school. It was simple, but it was alive. The teachers were enthusiastic. The bazillions and the lay teachers worked together. That's what I remember. And I was so impressed that we had been able to carry that on over here. I feel the spirits of those men who are uh, buried there. Uh, calling us to uh, a certain kind of Christian courage, uh, an understanding that um, uh, we are facing uh, a difficult time uh, in the church and in our own congregational uh, future as, as our numbers decline. But uh, imagine the challenges that they were facing, uh, uh, the men who are buried in that cemetery, especially the, the, the founders. Imagine the challenges that they were, were facing and, and what they gave uh, birth to, what they gave life to for the church. Surely our challenges are not as great as that. We have uh, their shoulders, uh, they, they carried us uh, into our future. And so when, when I'm in that, that sacred place, uh, I just feel as if I'm given the gift of courage and, 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 and trust and a willingness to risk. It's very moving to see those names and uh, the graves, names that uh, come up in our history and uh, are familiar with them, people I never met, but there they are, their, their uh, bones are there, and of course the, the founders. It's, um, it's a moving experience, and I was so glad that they made arrangements for Father John Ruhr, the most recent one to die, to be buried there. It's the end of an era, yes, I guess it is the end of an era. But they're uh, Sule Sandu, they're under the cedars, and uh, they've done their work, and I think God has blessed them. Alors, je suis plein de reconnaissance envers le Seigneur pour la dernière acquisition qui a été faite pour la direction du collège. Michael Bouvier. Je l'ai eu comme élève, mais il a une grande richesse de talents différents. Et je pense que c'est très, très, très bon pour le collège. L'esprit basilien, c'est peut-être compliqué à, à définir parce qu'il n'y a pas quelque chose d'écrit euh, et qui se, pourrait se, se dire comme ça. C'est peut-être plus la manière dont on vit euh, Aujourd'hui, notre travail, notre accompagnement des jeunes euh, au quotidien, dans, notre, euh, dans nos cours, mais aussi euh, dans la proposition de la foi, dans le, toute la, tout ce qui peut être l'accompagnement la, qu'on essaye de mettre en place euh, avec chaque jeune, euh, accueillir chacun de nos élèves, les conduire vers leur épanouissement et, et vers leur réussite. C'est notre projet d'établissement. Et je crois que c'est bien cet esprit qui, des Basiliens qui est vivant dans notre projet d'établissement. Quand je pense à Anna Ney, je pense au Collège du Sacré-Cœur où j'ai enseigné pendant quelques années. And connected with that, of course, my own Brazilian confreres who taught there, and the students, and uh, the city itself, really. The school looks over the city, so it's really quite beautiful, and those are lovely memories for me. Although I learned after my first visit that we were actually uh, founded uh, a little further up the mountains in San Symphoria and Damaun, uh, I began to see this, this movement from uh, San Symphorian de Mound into Ananae as a kind of metaphor for the whole congregation's growth uh, from San Symphorian to Ananae, from Ananae to uh, North America, from North America to Latin America. There is this constant going forth, uh, always carry, carrying this mission, and it's, it's a sacred mission, I believe, of uh, Christian education in service to those most in need wherever God is calling us. 
I notice in the place I'm living now, uh, the Orsini House of the Flaff Center, most of the members have never been to France, never been to Annone, but Annone is very much part of their life. And it, it, it's amazing that that happened. That, that, uh, that feeling, that openness, uh, that belonging came from there. Ben, les Basiliens dans le monde sont au Canada, aux, aux États-Unis, en Colombie, au Mexique. Euh, je suis souvent allé au Canada et aux États-Unis où j'ai été très très bien accueilli dans toutes les maisons euh, basiliennes. Et je garde des souvenirs euh, inoubliables de, de l'accueil réservé dans ces maisons. When I think of Anone, I think of what a great privilege it was to have known uh, our origins and the men responsible for it. Eh bien, pour nous, c'est une source d'espérance parce que nous, l'avenir euh, paraît très réduit, pour ne pas dire euh, inexistant. Euh, donc on est content de savoir qu'il y a des confrères, euh, et notamment des novices, qui entrent dans la communauté en Colombie, au Mexique. Euh, et puis euh, on, a, on connaît particulièrement des, des confrères qui sont au Canada, aux États-Unis, parce qu'ils sont venus à un moment ou l'autre ici en France, ou parce qu'ils ont travaillé avec les confrères. In his annual letter to the confreres dated the feast of St. Francis of Assisi, 1955, upon the proclamation of the decree of union of our congregation, Father George Flaff wrote these striking words. They were powerful then as they are today. Perhaps we have much to learn from the tradition preserved at Annone. The simplicity of their way of life and their spirit of poverty are striking among our confreres here. While their needs are quite adequately met, there is a complete absence of anything bordering on the extravagant or the luxurious. It gives us pause for thought. In countries where wealth, material advantages, physical comforts, and amusements of all kind are major preoccupations, we are in danger of adopting, even though unconsciously, the standards of the world around us instead of maintaining those of Christ that we may have professed standards that put a premium on poverty and simplicity and that are safeguarded only at the price of sacrifice. Anone and the spirit of St. Francis, which still hovers over it, teach a vital lesson. For decades, the group of priests portrayed in the mural gathered together young men and women and taught them. They walked among them and fed them in body and soul. The priests instilled in them a passion for the good they must do, a passion to reach out to the poor, the hungry and the wounded, a passion to reach out to the lost and bring them home, a passion to proclaim the truth of the Gospels. The Lord's raised hand in the Corellic mural is a sign to every generation. Go and do the same where you are. Do not be overcome by meager resources and the fear of the daunting crowds. Trust in God. Walk among the people, listen to them, feed them, teach them, and hold them together. Remember what happened on a Galilean plain years ago. Offer what little you have to the Lord and let him multiply your humble gifts to feed the world. In the words of the great Spanish philosopher and poet George Santayana, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. We must never forget our roots in early 19th century France and that little town of Annonay where it all began. As the sun sets now on the place of our foundation, the place that gave us roots and wings, let us give thanks to God who raised us up from the Ardèche and sent us to feed the world. <laughs>